Maybe to hide the crime? If she goes down for the murder instead of it just being a poisoning, then hey. I have some tokens to fuck up with. I might just take a stab at this. What about the ones in stamina? Well. Just in case so I don't fuck it up wholeheartedly. Hmm. Be aware that her humor is not appreciated in this courtroom. You can allow the court to be influenced by the reporter's testimony. Ray is the only one who knows what really happened here. Some victim we mean. That's true. Additionally, I read a really real the existence of the toxin you developed. That does not express an interest in it. Obviously, I gave nothing away of the fact that she didn't put herself there. I know my suspicions were true, I confronted Miss Barrett about the poison. To this? I can think of one reason. What? What? But before I explain, I'd like you to confirm something for the court. Did you gleam all the information for, for this newspaper article from what you overheard outside the hut? Of course you did. There can be no question of that. After all, when were we in the lab? When we were in the laboratory together? All we were told that it was a terrible toxin. And there is one more important fact to consider. According to the witness, Bambambi San's verbal attack against the victim began as soon as she entered the hut. In other words, it would have been impossible for her to have slipped the poison into Miss Spirit's drink. Where are you going with this council? Mini Memos uh son has made it quite clear that he observed every single thing that happened in the beach hut if the defendant had somehow found an opportunity this man would have seen it which means that miss barrett couldn't have invited the poison whilst the defendant was present in fact it must have been administered to her before member my son entered the hut yes very articulate Articularly put. When I walked into the hut, I immediately started to press Miss Barrett about the poison. At which point, Oint Mini Memo overheard some worrying information. Worrying information? What worrying information? The information which he subsequently included in the newspaper article, namely that the poison was being developed in strict secrecy. 
that it couldn't be readily obtained. Absolutely, in fact, that's quite an understatement. The only possible place it could have been from is my lab. Furthermore, or anyone afflicted by the poison would be exhibit telltale signs in death. The extreme contraction of the pupils. Yes, it's quite stark when you see it. There are other poisons that show similar symptoms, but none among new substances that are undetectable. In other words, it would be clear that the victim's life had been ended with the use of this particular poison. Which would reduce the number of suspects to only a handful of people. Everyone in my laboratory is aware of the unique properties of the toxin we've been developing. None of them would be foolish enough to attempt to use it for some nefarious thieves. Mbambisan being no exception. Therefore, we conclude that whoever administered this unique poison to the victim was a layperson, unaware of the telltale properties. Hmm. In other words, someone like you, right, Ten Mimi Mama. It was you who stole the poison from the laboratory that day. And it was you who administered it to the unwitting victim. But you quickly realized that was a terrible mistake. Because the poison caused such unusual symptoms and was so traceable. As you listen in from the far side of the bench, thin walls, you learnt of these facts. Beach huts and walls. But you were already given the victim to the poison at that point. It was too late. So he has to plan to disguise your mistake. A plan that involves stabbing the victim in the back through the read screen. But what good that could that possibly do? Is it obvious, Council? The plan was to kill Miss Brett before the poison could take effect. Once in the blood, the poison causes the onset of the pupil contraction. But he had hoped to precipitate the victim's death before that happened, hadn't he? Exactly. Because without any revealing signs of the new secret poison's use, no one would have ever suspected. This is extraordinary. Yes, the effects of the poison meant it would be too easily identified, so the killer had to mask its use, which he attempted to do by plunging a knife into the to the middle of the victim's back. <sighs> order, order, order. The argument is presented as sound, the court is satisfied that it warrants consideration. Does the prosecution have a counter-argument it wishes to put forward? Well, um, there are a number of, I mean, yes. I counter completely. The prosecution's evasive response clearly shows that in much the same way that he nurtures the remnants of his pobnot, he's clinging to his lost hope. Lost hope? Uh, what now? Ugh, you pathetic, useless, fallen samurai. Fallen? Who are you calling fallen? I don't need a counter-argument. What? What are you talking about? It should be blatantly obvious. I stole the poison, you say. Gave it to the victim, you say. Stabbed her, you say. Lots of fine theories. You admitted to stabbing her! But I don't need a counter-argument, because you don't even have an argument yourself. Where is your evidence? Yes, you make all the sound plaus plausible, don't you? But without evidence, it means nothing. Whereas I base my news on facts. Facts? What do you mean? Explain yourself. I mean, what the professor said earlier in this trial. It's all here, in my many memos. Every word, every slip of the tongue, all noted. It's what the show you news is famous for, is the power of the printed word. Mm 
Let me detach and steal a highly secret Thompson being developed for the government. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's all about being certs and such. That's why I think I need to go and test your fucking pen. How's that then? Blow the story wide open? See, I, right hand Mimi Memo, I'm your reporter from the Shogun News, couldn't possibly have stolen that poison from the professor's laboratory. I'm like 90% sure I already know where the poison was. This is the only poison that day. He stole it and he used it to kill. And if that's the case, as you identify the poison itself is the definitive evidence we need. Because whoever stole it from the laboratory that day is the true culprit here. What's your point, you annoyingly handsome country bumpkin? My point is this. There is one way that you, meaning my son, could have stolen the poison that day. I have heard enough verbal conjecture now, thank you. What the court must be shown is evidence. Safe. This is so close, and I I don't want to fuck it up, but I'm like 90% sure it's the pen, the reservoir in the pen. He dumped the contents of the liquid to then get the toxin of the ink to get the toxin. The proof, Your Excellency, is this fountain pen. A fountain pen. How can it possibly be relevant? These magical pens somehow seem to have enough ink to write many thousands of kanji characters. I believe they arrived in our country for the first time some 15 years ago. Oh now. But I swear by weasel hair calligraphy brush and nothing else. These newfangled pens are merely a fad. Well, as a forward-thinking man of words, obviously I love my fountain pen. Stuck. Suck up scoop ton of scump just ink and one's work is war march with words in a blink of an eye. That's right. Fun pens have a small reservoir in the barrel. In which the ink is sucked up through the nib of the pen in order to write with the latter. Later. What does this talk of sucking up ink have? And just as it's possible to suck up ink into the reservoir, it's also possible to eject it through the nib again, of course. My word, can this really be? Well, Mini Mama san Hmm? Mm. When you saw the deadly poison before your eyes in the laboratory that day, you used your fountain pen, your very lifeblood, to steal some of it, didn't you? by siphoning the poison through the nib and into the pen's reservoir. Attention! More absurdity! That never happened. True. We've heard that there were procedures in place to prevent thefts like this from the laboratory. Would have, would have anyone have thought to look inside a fountain pen of all places? No. I'm a little ashamed to say. That for fear of offending our guests, such a detailed search would not have been conducted. Well, this is quite startling, I must say. Remember the court that this pen was found in the clutches of the victim when she died. In other words, it was dropped at the scene by Mimi Mimison. So the culprit is this. So the crucial question is, when exactly was the pen dropped? Are you suggesting the natural conclusion is that, in your haste to act whilst the victim was distracted for a moment, you dropped the pen after you emptied the poison from it into her glass. There could have been a number of alternative explanations. For example, the witness could have been using his pen to write down the details of his conversation with the victim. And when shocked by one of her outrageous answers, the pen fell from his quivering hand. Then why not fucking pick it up? No, that can't be. If it was, how do you explain why the pen was devoid of ink? 
What? As you can see for yourself, if you examine the evidence, there would appear to be no ink present in the reservoir. One newspaper reporter goes into an interview with someone with nothing in his pen. No, the pen was dropped after the poison was filled in. Well, in... After the poison that filled this reservoir had been emptied in the victim's glass, I... Losing it. Witness, what do you have to say in your defense? So this is how your modern justice system works, is it? So what if the ink in my pen runs dry? So what if my pencil snaps? I can always claw my way back into the game. I have plenty in reserve. You claim I sucked the poison up into my pen? That's wild speculation, nothing more. I thought you could bring down a fine, upstanding citizen with a trick like that. Think again. Hmm. What fine, outstanding citizen? You admitted to stabbing a woman. I'm sorry, that eliminates you from outstanding citizen. Looks as though you've taken one final decisive blow to finish this matter. As I see it, the situation is now very simple. Rest upon whether or not this witness did indeed steal the poison on the stay in question. And therefore, it all depends on whether or not the defense can prove that he did it. Did with evidence. How do I take the thing to just put drop it? I know such evidence that that could possibly exist. Mini Mamazon, this is how our modern justice system works. What? In the courtroom, evidence is everything. Something you would do well to remember. Because we are well past the point of speculation at this stage, I assure you. Very well then, I call upon the defense to present the aforementioned evidence. Mention prove by means of this item that it was the witness to pen the soul. It be this. Counsel, what is that bottle? This bottle contains a unique chemical reagent that can identify the poison in question. Hmm? Yes, that poison is entirely new since this of alkaloids developed by my colleagues and I. It would be impossible to detect trace of it of it by any other method or from any other perspective from another pr perspective simply with this chemical region anybody at all could check for traces of the poison the region what one drop of this contents uh, this of this bottle on the tip of your fountain pen meaning memo son is all it will take to solve this case beyond all reasonable doubt No, you can't. I won't. Your crimes are bad enough, but at least know when to admit defeat. Your Excellency? Defense requests permission to carry out the test on the sun pen at once. Also, can we restrain the witness? This isn't my fault. The Empire drove me to it. Drove me to hold the highest citizen of nations. I took up arms in the form of a mighty pen. Oh, good lord, he's talking way too fast for me. <laughs> Suzato, with me? I'm there. Flip? Did I do it right? That was the Suzato takedown, wasn't it? Not quite. That was... The Rutaro takedown. The instant the first drop of the region touched the nib of the fountain pen, it was clear to everyone present. I mean, the fucking outburst of him going fucking mad was enough evidence in my book. When I saw it there in the lab, the poison, I just... The devil got hold of me, and I decided to do it on a whim. 
I excused myself and emptied the ink down in the sink in the bathroom, washed the reservoir out carefully. And then you waited for an opportunity to suck some of the poison, didn't you? Into your fountain pen. Yes, that's right. Answer me one thing, Mini Memo-san. Why did, did you steal it? For what purpose? Isn't it obvious to find out what it was made of and expose it in the, in the article? I mean, it was a secret project, after all. Too dirty for a journal like me to pass up. Then, then why did the English woman end up dead? I went to that hut intending to quiz her on the, her situation, that's all. I was a reporter. A known killer enjoying freedom, evading justice by leaving the country. I told her what I thought about it. And she... She just laughed in my face. Oh, what's this? A far eastern caveman pur pur purporting to practice journalism. Really, you must learn the difference between reporting and listening at doorways, you ignorant plebeian. What? What did you call me? This country, with its pretentious... Pretend... Yeah, pretensions to a justice system, to a free press, it's really very depressing. You see our superior ways in the West, yet you lack the mental capacity to emulate them. Get out of here, you oaf. Get out and crawl back into the cave you came from. That's when I remembered. But the deadly poison I happened to have in my pen at the time. What a terrible tale. In my head, I knew I should I'd just get out of there as quickly as possible, but I couldn't. I couldn't let her get away with what she'd done. When she clearly had no remorse at all. I suppose it was my journal spirit getting all fired up. I'd like to ask you something. Yes. You often talk about justice. But surely as a journalist, you could have used other means to deliver the justice you sought. There's no justice in the press. Sorry? After that trial nine months ago, I kept digging and digging to find out what happened in that courtroom. And finally, I discovered the truth. It was a cover-up. That's what it was. A, a cover-up? What do you mean? I would remind you of your position, witness. Be careful of what you say. Oh, come now. Does it strike you as strange? We're suddenly not allowed to convict a foreign national. Counselor jurisdiction shouldn't have never come um, into it. And yet that puffed-up English woman was going to sail away into to the sunset, a free woman? The only possible explanation is that behind the scenes, some deal had gone down between Britain and Japan. What sort of deal? I'd done my research, dug up all the dirt. It was all ready to be published. But you know what happened? The editor just tore the article up. He came under pressure from the government, you mean. If our government is going to let criminals walk free, then they're going to crush the free press. And what choice do I have but to see that justice is done myself? What are you, Wolverine? Let's not forget, Mini Memo. That you committed murder yourself, and you tried to lay the blame on the defendant's store. I'm sorry, but you're no better than Jezile Barrett. What? The truth is, you have no right to talk about justice at all. I... I suppose... It would appear that we have reached a conclusion in this trial at last. Counsel for the Defense, Ryotaro Naruhodo? Oh. Ah, yes. Uh -huh. Sorry, Your Excellency. Just musing in a manly way here. 
It's almost unbelievable that this is your first experience of the Supreme Court. It was an excellent performance. In truth, it very much reminded me of your cousin's exploits. Oh, Naruhodo Ri Ryunosuke, you mean? The way he handled that trial nine months ago and the way you handled this one, it gives me hope that we are genuinely entering a new era of justice in this land. That is very flattering, Your Excellency. Hearing the defense you put forward today made me feel most keenly that the future of our justice system will be forged by you and your contemporaries. Thank you. So, Prosecutor Auchi, do you have any final thoughts? Seppuku! <laughs> Prosecutor Auchi? I? Takatsuchi of the Aochi clan have been bested by a callow youth, not once now, but twice. If there were any shred of my former self left, it has withered and died here today. Gosh, your journey to cultural enlightenment sure took a while, didn't it? Silence? Rather than living on in shame, I will end it all now with this plate. For that is the true path to Ouchieism. Ouchieism? One hopes that the only way in which he will be modeling himself after the witness. Brig of my top knot, then time is right for farewell. Hope is lost forever. Takasuchi. Oh, he's gonna cut off the top knot. Oh my god. Now, in regard to the defendant, Ray Mambami. Yes, Your Excellency. I have reached my final verdict. I hereby find you. Not guilty. Yay! When do I get to go back to England? Court is adjourned. Also, Crossfinger that says that it does not have to deal with a murder on ship. 13th August, 23rd. 2.38 p.m. Supreme Court of Judicature Defendants Antechamber. It's over. My heart is still pounding in my chest, though. It's all I can do just to stay standing. Lawyers have such great responsibility, such great burden to bear. Don't they, Naruhoto-san? Suzato, Suzato. Thank you, thank you so much. You were so dashing in there. Ray, and Father. Honestly, I'm so touched by everything you've... Oh no. I think I'm going to cry. It wasn't easy, but together we made it. I was on the verge of tears at the end too. The only reason I'm still here is because of you. Oh no, I can't take all the credit. It took courage to tell the truth in there. You did wonderfully, Ray. So I would have to say that the congratulation belongs to you. Suzato, don't be so standoffish. Sorry? We're friends, equals, and the trial's over, so no more formal super cute humility nonsense. It's time to celebrate with swagger, to throw caution to the wind. Caution to the... what? 
I'm the great defense lawyer Ryotaro Naruhodo, and I'm taking you out to the milk bar tomorrow. Or something. Right, I see. I'll, um, think about it, Ray. At any rate, we really knocked the wind out of that horrid man. It felt so good. Yes, it was satisfying. It really was. Isn't there anybody else we could throw toge oh, together? Is there anybody else we could... I hope you're not looking at me, Ray. Oh, my. Good. Of course not. Of course not. Ah, there it is at last. Ray's lovely smile. You fought for your friend to the very last. As your father, I'm extremely proud of you. Defense Attorney Ryuhara. Ryutaro Naruhoto. Thank you. I couldn't have done it without your help. Anyway, it's time to bid farewell to Ryutaro, I think. I shall miss him in a way, but it's back to Suzato Mikotoba now. So, I'll never see him again then. What a terrible shame. What? 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 What is happening? Ah, Suzaki-san and Inspector Hosanaga. I do hope you've been keeping well. I is that... really you? Yes, I had to change my appearance for, well, obvious reasons, I hope. But it's me. Suzano Mikotoba. I, I... I don't... So dashing. So divine. No! So dashing, yes, and, and and devilishly divine. Just look at you. I had no idea, Mrs. Suzato, Esquiress, that you were Locom student Naruhodo-san's Esquire Kish cousin. Astonishingly astounding, Ace Attorney. Poor Suzaki-san, so confused. I still remember the first time I ever met him. He was in a prison cell in London. One extraordinary conundrum it was that the unwinning student from Japan found himself embroiled in. After Naruhodo-san's skillful defense at the Old Bailey, Suzuki-san was freed to return to Japan. And now he seems to have earned himself great fame as an author. I'm stunned, that's truly impressive disguise. Even I had no idea. And I'm the chief inspector at the police bureau, who came up with Mr. Turtle, no less. Masanaga, your disguise is really... You need help with them. I'm not sure you should be admitting to that, inspector. Amazing. You're a woman of many faces, I see. Just two, really. And this was a once-in-a-lifetime event, I hope. Oh, I'm not a patch on you, though, oh, Inspector. Well, I am a professional, of course. I do worry about the Inspector Hosanaga sometimes. I really do. Man is consistently bleeding. Or coughing up blood. There's a lot to worry about. Nine months ago, when he appeared here at the Supreme Court to testify, he was undercover disguised as the head waiter of a restaurant. And then on the steamship, it's to Great Britain, of course, disguised as a sailor to keep us safe on the journey. Though that didn't help you, did it, Kazuma-sama? From my perspective, I have to admit that I have mixed feelings about all this. I mean, now the truth has been lost forever. What do you mean? I'm talking about the murder of that Englishwoman woman committed at the end of last year. Ah, yes, it was the English doctor that she killed, as I understand it. Dr. John H. Wilson, yes, the man I invited to Japan, personally. The mystery is, why did she kill him? And now the culprit herself is dead, we'll probably never know the answer. I don't think we're gonna get the answer either way. Just saying. She was gonna get off Scots free and then be back to England. You likely never would have gotten it. On the Vern Oyster to Great Britain, we had a most unexpected encounter. With Mr. Herlock Sholmes, the great detective, I mean. 
Yes, I remember. Mr. Sholmes well, of course. Ah! My arch nemesis. How lightly you utter his name. Well, according to the stories published about him in The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, the detective had once a partner who helped him solve crimes, a best friend. And that man was an exceptional doctor of medicine by the name of John H. Wilson. What? Doctor? Doctor Wa Wilson? I just can't believe that it's a coincidence. I think that the English doctor of medicine killed here in Japan nine months ago must have been the friend and partner of Mr. Sholmes. And if that's really true... And the poor girl won't ever see her beloved father again. As you know, I traveled to Great Britain once myself to study. It was around the time you were born. Yes, grandmother told me about it. On returning to Japan, I took up my professorship at the Imperial Yume University but I also serve another role as advisor to the government on diplomatic affairs. Yes, I was aware of that as well. In any case, I'm sure you understand that there are some confidential matters I cannot divulge to you. You know something. Couldn't you just tell me just, could you tell me just one thing? Why did you summon me back to Japan? It's been two months now since I returned. When I left England, it was because urgent telegram had arrived from Japan. It said you collapsed with a high fever and you were growing weaker by the day. What? Where did that news come from? That's what I'd like to know because after a long sea voyage, I found you in fine health, Father. Was there something in Great Britain that you perceived might inconvenience me in some way or harm me? That's really the only explanation I can think of. Dear me. Do you reserve your most cunning glares for your father, Suzato? I'm sorry, my dear. I simply can't. Ah, uh, let me go. Go, oh, good lord, we got a murder on loose. <laughs> huh? Medium ammo son? So, one throw wasn't enough for you. I've got one last thing to say before they take me away, Professor. Me? I know the truth. I know you had a hand in what went on. In that visiting student's fate. Visiting student? Jezile Barrett, you mean? No, not her. The student of law who left for Great Britain eight months ago. Student of law? He must mean Kazuma-san? What are you talking about? What does any of this have to do with Kazuma-san? Nobody here in Japan knows about knows anything about it. They don't know that the guy never made it to England, that he died on that steamship, and that he'll never. Um, excuse me? Well, I didn't expect to find him in here. Okay, I guess the judge doesn't need security. He's got it on lock. <laughs> Where were you, officer? Or is playing it? Terribly sorry, are your excellency? Apparently, they were also eavesdropping. I was coming to tell you that the rickshaw has arrived, Eugen. And it's a good job I came by. Yes, thank you for dealing with him. And I'll be there shortly. Oh, um, Your Excellency. The trial's over. I'm not Your Excellency anymore. I'm merely your father's friend, Seishiro oh, Jingoku. And may I say, that since I saw you last, you seem to have taken on a more dashing appearance, Suzato. Did you know all along from the start of the trial? A judge sees everything, Suzato. I couldn't let you take the risk if Seshiro here hadn't known, and then he'd recognized you. So I had a word in his ear beforehand, as an old friend. So, Seshiro, shall we? Yes, having ruled on that case, we now have a various diplomatic issues to address. Before you go, Father. Sorry, my dear. We shall have to return to our earlier conversation at a later date. But 
Well done again, both of you. You did admirably. This sounds shady as fuck. What the fuck is happening? Oh, thank you very much. What did you think of my session or oh, sling, eh? It's been a while since I've seen a man flying like that. Whatever could father be hiding from me? About Jezal Barret, about Dr. Wilson, and now it seems, according to the reporter, about Kazuma-sama. I'm going to have to bring this up with father sometime. When nobody else is around. Um. Judicial assistant Mikotoba Esquires, could I, I have a word? Oh, yes, of course, Ozeki-san. What is it? I think perhaps it couldn't be fate that we're meeting again like this now. You see... There's something I need to tell you. Oh. I believe... That it may be related to the reason why your father summoned you back from England. This I have to hear. Please, Hoseki-san, tell me at once. I will, I will, I will, I will. As you know, my time in England was... Terrible. Cursed. I have no doubt. Such awful things I was embroiled in. Thank goodness Locom student Naruhoda-san, Esquire, stepped in. After he secured my freedom, I couldn't wait to get on a ship back here to my homeland. Having arrived in Japan, I submitted a report about my experiences to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The next thing I knew, I had a visitor. It was your father, Professor Mikotoba. He wanted to ask me all sorts of questions. Sorts of things about my report. My father? He seemed to be especially taken with a particular part of the report. Anyway, he left eventually, having thoroughly quizzed me. But it was the very next day that he sent a telegram to you asking to, asking you to report er, in Japan. What was it then, the particular part my father was interested in? I don't really know exactly. But do you remember them, those two terrible cases I was caught up in? Of course, I couldn't. I could never forget. Your father seemed to concern himself mainly with the second case, the second one. You mean... The one Mr. Sholmes forbade any f of us to talk about in public? Which is why the only case involving you and that member of the public is aware of is the first. Well, I don't care. I don't have to listen what that dastardly detective says. Anyway, the point is... It seems that case somehow holds the key to all those curious unanswered questions. That horrific, hideous, heinous case. The case of the haunted lodgings. <laughs> that case somehow caused my father to summon me urgently back to Japan. I thought the whole business was over, but it seems I was wrong. Perhaps that was only a start. Perhaps the story is not yet told. So, the mystery of that English woman's death is solved, thank goodness. And having stood in the Supreme Court now, I think I can comprehend a little better. How you must be feeling as you fight for people's freedom in a foreign land, Naruhodo-san. But actually, I'm writing to you today because of another matter. Hmm. I met Sosik-san, and we talked about that second case he was involved in. Father has said nothing to me, but I feel certain of it. That case holds the key to some great unsolved mystery. My notes on the case should still be in the office, tucked away at the back of the shelves on the left. Perhaps you might like to look over them again. Today, for the first time this year, it feels as though summer has arrived. The sky is a brilliant blue. It makes me long to see you again. Yours, Susato. Susato, come back to England! Naruhodo needs help. Or am I not? You might be okay. Maybe. End!
to that of success. Bravo!